It's a luxury to pursue what makes you happy. It's a moral obligation to pursue what you find meaningful. And that doesn't mean it's easy. It might require sacrifice. If you need to change your job too, let's say you have a family and, 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 and children and, and a mortgage, you have responsibilities. You've already picked up those responsibilities. You don't just get to walk away scot-free and say, well, I don't like my job, I quit. That's no strategy. But what you might have to do is you think, well, this job is killing my soul. All right, so what do I have to do about that? When you're 25, you can be an idiot. It's no problem. Even when you're out in a job search, it's like, well, you don't have any experience and you're kind of clueless. It's yeah, yeah, you're young. You know, it's no problem. We can, that's what young people are like, but they're full of potential. Okay, well, now you're the same person at 30. It's like people aren't so thrilled about you at that point. It's like, what the hell have you been doing for the last 10 years? Well, I'm just as clueless as I was when I was 22. It's yeah, but you're not 22. You're an old infant. We're built for struggle, us human beings. We're built to contend with the world. We're built to contend with reality. You want a challenge, and the best way that you can take on a challenge, because a challenge fortifies you. So you don't want to be secure, you want to be strong. And you get strong by taking on optimal challenges. And so you lay out your destiny in the world, and you take the slings and arrows of fate. And you make yourself stronger while you're doing so. And you might fail, and fortune might do you in. But it's your best bet. And, you know, people that have extracted unbelievable successes out of catastrophic failures. If you're in a dark and terrible place and someone says you're okay the way you are, then you don't know what to do about that. It's right. like, no, I'm not. I'm having a terrible time and I'm hopeless. You're okay the way you are. Well, then what? What? That's it? That's where I am? And what do you want to tell a young person? You're 17. You're okay the way you are. It's like, no, you're not. you got 60 years to be better. And you could be way better. You could be incomparably better across multiple dimensions. And in pursuing that better, that's where you'll find the meaning in your life. And that will give you the antidote to the suffering. This is the trick, though. You have to pick a path of discipline. Whether what path of discipline you have to pick is a different issue. So there could be a rule. The rule could be, the rule might not be follow this rule. The rule might be, you have to follow some rules. So it's a meta rule. And the meta rule is you have to discipline yourself. And the issue is, well, how? That's not really the relevant question. You can pick a disciplinary path. The reason that discipline is necessary is because you're a mass of competing short-term interests. And so the question is then, well, which short-term interests should win out? And the answer to that is none of them. They need to be organized into a hierarchy that makes them functional across time and across individuals. Stop doing the things that you know are wrong that you could stop doing, right? So it's, it's, a fairly, it's a fairly limited attempt. First of all, we're not going to say that you know what the good is or what the truth is in any ultimate sense. But we will presume that there are things that you're doing that for one reason or another you know are not in your best interests. There's something about them that you just know you should stop. They're kind of self-evident to you. Other things you're going to be doubtful about, you're not going to know which way is up and which way is down. But there are things that you're doing that you know you shouldn't do. Now, some of those you won't stop doing for whatever reason. But there's another subset that you could stop doing. It might be a little thing. Well, that's fine. Stop doing it and see what happens. And what'll happen is your vision will clear a little bit. And then something else will pop up that you will also know you should stop doing and that you could stop doing. And you could do that repeatedly for, for an indefinite period of time. And, and, you know, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to ever be able to formulate a clear and final picture of what constitutes the truth and the good. But it does mean that you'll be able to continually move away from what's untruth and what's bad. And, you know, that's not a bad start. You're like an internal coalition of warring single-minded tribes, and they have to all be brought under the organizational structure of long-term collective vision. And in order to do that, you have to be disciplined. And any discipline, technically speaking, is an attempt to bring all those competing short-term impulses under a larger scale and more inclusive framework. You do that and then, well, that's actually what gives you freedom. Who it is that you're trying to be, right? 
and you, you aim at that and then you use everything you learn as a means of building that person that you want to be and and I really mean want to be I don't mean should be even those things those things are going to overlap and it's important to distinguish between those because that's partly and this is back down to the micro routine analysis so if I was saying well you're going to try to make yourself more industrious okay number one specify your damn goals because how are you going to hit something if you don't know what it is that isn't going to happen and often people won't specify their goals too because they don't like to specify conditions for failure so if you keep yourself all vague and foggy which is real easy, because that's just a matter of not doing as well, then you don't know when you fail. And people might say, well, I really don't want to know when I fail, because that's painful. So I'll, I'll keep myself blind about when I fail. That's fine, except you'll fail all the time then. You just won't know it until you've failed so badly that you're done. And that can easily happen by the time you're 40. Well, you should be afraid of taking risks and pursuing something meaningful. But you should be more afraid of staying where you are if it's making you miserable. You're paying a price by sitting there being miserable. You might say, well, the devil I know is better than the one I don't. It's like, don't be so sure of that. The clock is ticking. Yeah, and if you're miserable in your job now and you change nothing in five years, you'll be much more miserable. You develop a vision of what, your life, what you would like your life to be. And that associates the, so the goal, well, once the goal is established and then you break down the goal into micro processes that you can implement, the micro processes become rewarding in proportion in relation to their uh, causal association with the goal. And that tangles in your, your incentive reward system. You know, we talked about the dopaminergic incentive reward system, and that's the thing that keeps you moving forward. And the way it works is that it works better if it produces positive emotion when it can see you moving towards a valued goal. Okay, well, what's the implication of that? better have a valued goal because otherwise you can't get any positive motivation working out and so the more valuable the goal in principle the more the micro processes associated with that goal start to take on a positive charge we also know that the higher your conscientiousness the lower your neuroticism conscientiousness does seem to keep neuroticism in check and so i would say and have said this to many people clean your room organize your life get a routine get up every day at the same time go to bed at the same time establish disciplined habits that will help a lot a schedule like and here's how to use a schedule use a use a calendar but don't use it as a tyrant you want to use your calendar as if it's your confidant and advisor and what you want to do is use the calendar sit down and open the calendar and think okay well here's what i'm going to do i'm going to design a week of days that i would really like to have what that would mean then is that you would schedule things that you would consider meaningful and productive you know on a daily basis so that you feel that your life is justified by having a day like that and also to schedule enough of your responsibilities so that you make progress day by day instead of falling farther behind. Generating a view of your life that consists of valued goals that you want to attain and then steps by which those might be attained. Well, then you can ally that with a schedule and then, you know, not only do you know what you're doing, you know that what you're doing is moving you towards something you want and that's rewarding. You need to have a primary discipline. It's absolutely necessary to succeed in life. Now, once you have a primary discipline, then you can branch out and, and become a multiplicity in your disciplined approach. And then you're absolutely bloody unstoppable.